Welcome to Listings and Lifestyles. Here you'll be given exclusive access into some of the Valley's most amazing luxury estates. From Paradise Valley Mansion to the charming cottages of the historic district. We will take you on an architectural adventure like no other. With great property comes the lifestyles that complement these beautiful homes. From trendy family communities in Arcadia to the opulent Gatsby lifestyles of the Biltmore to the charm of Western Contour in Cave Creek. We will experience all of the Valley of the Sun has to offer and meet the amazing agents who are selling and living, listings and lifestyles. Thanks for joining us this Saturday. We are back up here in Desert Mountain. Uh, my friend, uh, partner Davis Driver, he uh, he was kind enough to get us through the gates so we could uh, play a round of golf. I gotta tell you, I got destroyed. Uh, uh, these courses are tough out here for so for you uh, golfers. Uh, Desert Mountain's the place to be. We're going to be going through a tour of some of the most exquisite home sites that Desert Mountain has to offer. Um, it's going to be a creative process. We're excited you're here with us today. So let's go see what Davis is up to. Hopefully he's getting everything mapped out and uh, get ready for our journey. There they are. Hey, Court. How you doing? I'm doing well. What's going on? Hey, it's good to see you. My, Thank you so much for uh, for getting me up here today to play around a round of golf. You're I, welcome. <laughs> That's my favorite golf course out of all six. So. Is it? And it's a hard golf course. It, it destroys most people. <laughs> I think I lost more balls than I actually got in the hole, but that's another story. Well, I, if you're running low, I've got a whole bunch in the garage for <laughs> I, you. I, I thought you might. Well, hey, thanks for bringing us back up here. Uh, looks like you're busy at it. I've been uh, yeah. kind of previewing our audience where we're going today. Why don't you kind of like... Lay, lay out the land for us. What well, we this is a map of uh, all of Desert Mountain. We're down here in the lower section. Okay. There are six home sites that I'd like to share with you today in Desert Mountain and a seventh that is just across the border here in a mountainous area of Carefree Ranch Highlands. Okay. So I think it'll be a very interesting time. The lots range from $224,000 up to $825,000. There is something up here for everyone, as you just alluded to. Uh, but this is a nice range of options. In addition to these lots, which are all formally listed on the MLS, I have another eight lots, which an investor has given me the privilege of trying to market okay. on a low-key, non-MLS basis. So, if, Oh, you must if know what you're doing with this stuff, huh? Well, I've been here <laughs> 26 and a half years, and uh, uh, it's, it's been a specialty of mine. Is there any lots. corner of the place you don't know? No, I, I, can, found it yet. I can mentally take a vacation and go visit. <laughs> An individual rock. I love I it. Want to. I love it. Cool. Where, where, where are we going to start? Well, we're going to start down here. This is just in geographical order of encounter. So we're going to start down here. Okay. Uh, which is a lot Gamble Quail 13. Nice site. Has some pleasant views. Backs up to the Renegade uh, driving range and is a short walk to the Renegade facility. Next is Eagle Feather 451. Um, nice lot. Beautiful sorrel forest. I mean sorrel cactus. Where do you see this giant cactus on that lot? Then we're going to go up here to a lot that backs up to the sixth green on the Geronimo Golf Course. And then we're going to go see a five acre site, Lone Mountain 40, that has a spectacular panoramic view looking to the north. It ca captures all the continental mountains. Then we're going to go up here and see a site, Patch Peak 65, which is a very interesting site. It would particularly lend itself well to someone who wants to have a lower level, perhaps for a substantial car garage. Okay. In that if they do that, then they can prop the main floor of the house up high enough to see over a home that's already existing here and cool. capture a big valley floor view. The last site in Desert Mountain that we're going to go see is Apache Peak 94. Very unusual site. Honestly, a tough site on which to build. It's nestled into a cirque of boulders, but it has fantastic views all the way to the mountains, the, uh, the Mazatals north of Payson, uh, okay. all the way down to the so, uh, to the McDowell's. Wow. It's a fantastic big view lot. You can see all the way up there. Well, you can't see the town, but you can see the mountains that are outside. Well, it's, sure. Wait till you see it. It's fantastic. Cool. Well, it's we a got nice a lot selection. To cover. Yeah, we, we do. Got, we got a lot to cover. Uh, you mind if we just ride with you? No, I think that'd be great. Let's go cool. do that. Let's do it.
so so kind of give us a uh, a rundown this uh, so we were just up here last weekend in desert mountain i kind of got a feel for it you know going to going to play golf today um it seems like they're well, i guess we'll call them little villages yeah there are about 45 different villages in desert mountain some of them are custom home site villages and they're going to be the ones we're going to visit today got it the other flavor is semi-custom from homes the developer designed and built. Gotcha. Up to 20 years ago. Now, is there any of that still happening today in terms of uh, developer uh, no. work, or is it all custom? There was a, there were a series of developers who were involved in Desert Mountain. Lyle Anderson was the original developer. Sure. But uh, the last successor developer uh, left the community about six years ago when the club was purchased by the members. Got it. They left with a handful of home sites and a handful of homes, which then fell onto the resale market to be sold. And uh, they've gotten rid of all their homes with just a handful of home sites left. So, so tell me exactly how does the how does the membership work up here? Well, that's a good question. It, uh, for, for you viewers who have been familiar with Desert Mountain for some time, there has been a significant change just a couple of years ago. And that has to do with the fact that prior to that, you had to own real estate in order to buy a membership. Okay. And most real estate was offered with a membership, the one that came with it when it was bought from the developer. But a couple of years ago, they separated the membership from the real estate and now someone can approach the club and upon successful application buy either a social membership which is to say everything but golf sure or they can buy an unlimited everything which is to say golf plus got it and uh, right now that is on a bid asked uh, basis that changes every month and uh, it's really a bargain. I think a full membership can be had now for under fifty thousand dollars. And that's for everything. All the golf courses, the restaurants, the restaurants, amenities. Yeah, yeah. The whole deal. The whole, the whole deal. Wow. So we're in. We just entered into Gamble Quail. This is the lowest village in terms of elevation on the property. It's attractive for a lot of people because it's just a couple minutes from the front gate. So if you've got someone who's got to hit the airport a lot or still has children in school, sure. otherwise need to get back and forth into town, uh, they would favor a lower elevation village such as Gamble Quail. Cool. So here we are at Gamble Quail 13. Let's go take a look at it. Let's do it. Walking <laughs> explaining to people how to these lots because the lots are not bladed off. They are all left in their natural state. Sure. So there is a certain amount of art and understanding that goes into figuring out how to use these lots. Uh, the developer has created something called a building envelope which establishes the area within which the construction has to take place. And they're all different shapes and sizes. And you've got all different slopes. And there are maximum parapet heights. So there's there's some a lot work, of thought. Yeah, a lot of thought, some work involved. But it, what it means is that you can buy a lot with certainty, knowing what your view is going to be, even though the house across the street hasn't been built. So this site uh, rises behind us to include this ridge line. Okay. There is a space on top of the ridge line that's within the building envelope. If we were up there, you could look down on the Renegade Practice Range. And so it affords some interesting possibilities for looking south and picking up some city light views at night. Uh, the beautiful views of sunsets any day of the year to the west are, are going to be super safe. Uh, it's an interesting lot if somebody wants to build a house with a lower story, maybe a big garage, maybe a big workshop, whatever. But then that way you could prop up the main floor of the house to get and capture views. more better views than we're enjoying right now because, frankly, we're standing a little bit low. at today correct okay so we're only going uphill from here only going uphill from and this is approximately one acre just a tick over an acre tick over an acre and at uh, three hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollars wow okay does so, not include a membership but it's three hundred thousand three hundred thousand all right we're back on the road here um, where are we heading next yeah, we're friend? on Desert Mountain Parkway just going past the Renegade Golf Course here on the left our next stop is Eagle Feather 
Next stop is Eagle Feather uh, for the lot that's numbered 451. View of the McDowell's. The, the people here are typically here in the wintertime. Yeah. So a southern exposure is normally what they're after on the sunny back patio. They could do that here and have a very private back patio. And at the same time, they could create some outdoor space up here to enjoy. You know, it's, it's quite incredible. Uh, even just You get a whole different perspective of the valley as a whole. Um, see these mountain ranges up here. Yeah, it's I'm, incredible. I'm suspicious that a lot of people don't understand that Phoenix is surrounded by we, as many mountains as there is. Yes, there. it's truly a valley. Yeah, we're in a bowl. And there's a lot of mountains around. I mean, we're looking out right now, Court. Those are mountains. That you can see it in the, very faintly. Those are the mountains out by uh, Wickenburg. Just in very fast. I can see. I can see it. All right, where are we heading next? Now we're going. Go to the Mountain Skyline 40. This is quite a place. Well, Desert Mountain, the excuse me, Mountain Skyline, the village we're going to, and Turquoise Ridge, or the other the one next door, are really right in the dead center of the community. So I, I think that the people that choose to live in those two villages like the proximity to the Snort Clubhouse. Sure. I always hear the same thing. They're like, well, it's not rolling sand dunes. It's green oh, it's, <laughs> and colorful. We're supposed to average about 13 inches of rain up here. I don't think we've hit that average the last lately, couple of years. Lately, but uh, I, there's a lot of chlorophyll here. Mm -hmm. This is not a brown landscape. No, not there's at all. There's a lot of greenery to it. Okay, now another thing. This lot is at the end of a cul-de-sac, which is pretty nice. And the lot that I'm aiming the car at right now was purchased by the people who own this home on the left. Okay. So this lot has some splendid isolation because there won't be a neighbor there as long as they own that house. Got it. So Got let's it. go take a look at this one. Let's do it. Let's go see Mountain Skyline 48. It's gorgeous already. I love the Saguaro. I love the Saguaro too. It's got two strategically placed bird holes. Well, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I came over right after playing golf. I don't think I would have done this very well in, uh, in dress shoes. Good call, good call me. The pole that marks the center of the building envelope. Okay. So we're pretty close in the middle of this 33,000 square foot lot. So we're just under an acre on this it's one. Yeah, three quarters of an acre. Okay. So there's the golf course right there. Yeah, the... Uh, this is the, the sixth green on sixth hole on Geronimo is just behind this ridge line. You can see a little bit of the grass. Sure. Oh yeah, I can see it. So there won't be any structures between us and those homes. Got it. Which means this mountain panorama is safe and protected, which is pretty nice. It's incredible. And these are all the continentals, right? The and entire continental mountain range. And then Apache Peak down to uh, right to the east. Uh, you can't quite see the valley floor from where we're from the altitude at which we're standing now. Perhaps from a second story window, you might catch a glimpse. Sure. Uh, Lone Mountain is here, and that's a, that's a dominant feature in the view. Is that something that you see happen quite a, quite a bit when uh, people build their homes in here? They'll, they'll buy adjoining lots? You know, I'm, yes. Yeah. I'm doing research now to determine exactly how many, but I'm thinking it's close to 150 people. Is 150 that, lots that have are, been picked up by people who want to protect either their view or their flank. I get, love it. I love so it. Give me another couple of weeks and I'll know exactly. I, I right. knew you'd be the guy that would know that. I'll have that answer for you all the way around. This, this whole view is untouchable. Yeah, and that's what, you, it's a big part of what you're building and buying up here, is the views, correct? Well, that's, that's what people, when they come see a house, yeah. they walk in the front door. And they go, wow. Well, they go straight to the back patio. <laughs> they, they, they don't, I can't say they don't care about the house. Sure. But they want to check out the view first. Yep. You know, in the, in the time I've gotten to know you, you, you definitely, your heart's here. 
It's beautiful. So where are we going to go to next? What's our next lot that we're looking at? Uh, the next lot is Lone Mountain 40. Lone Mountain 40. This particular site is over five acres. It's priced at $825,000. Okay. Without a membership in the club. And this is an upscale neighborhood. Again, this is close to the Sonora Clubhouse. It's pretty close to the front gate. And Wow. It's got this view of about half of Desert Mill. Wow. You know what's fun up here is as you uh, as you cross over and crest these hills, you just get a whole nother set of views around every corner, every bend. And what uh, what size home are we looking at that would that would be here? If I remember correctly, I think his plan is somewhere around six thousand feet, give or take. Okay. Well, I would imagine for someone like that, um, creating a, a masterpiece, if you will, it's got to be kind of like a kid in a candy store because you got challenges to overcome, but an amazing location to work with and uh, to capture these views. This is beautiful. What's our price point on this lot? This one's eight hundred twenty-five thousand. This is uh, it's a little piece of heaven right here. An incredible view. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we'll buy in a minute, but we got to get going. Let's go see. The Let's next do one. it. Okay, we're heading there. We've got another nice little pathway here, and we're going to go to the uh, the high ground here so your viewers can see what's possible. And my guess is that uh, the pickings are starting to get scarce on stuff like this. Oh, it'd be hard to find 10 lots with this view yeah. in the whole community. And we're just under an acre and priced at $699. $699? Yeah. Let's go see it. Okay, guys. This is Apache Peak 65. All right, this lath shows an elevation of 3,326 feet, okay. ground level. That is significant because the, the plans that Rick Doherty has done are tuned to that level. So he can get the house another two or three feet higher by putting a larger garage down here. At this height, there's no question, you've got a big, beautiful view to the southwest over the boulders. All the way out there, you're kidding. Oh, yeah, no. You can see clearly the McDowell. Uh, you can see the roof line below us, but you can still see the McDowells. And at nighttime, this is filled with uh, about half the city light views you could otherwise get. Sure. One important thing is this one's like over here, I picked up by the guy that owns that house. <laughs> so that lot's not likely to go anywhere or get put on the market until he wants to sell his house, and whoever buys that house is probably going to not want yeah, the house underneath there. You're going to buy the lot with uh, this guy on the this contemporary home right behind us. He's just put a ton of money into that house. The house across the street is a brand new spec house that I think is on the market. feet of elevation gain makes a huge amount oh of difference. Oh my goodness. I don't think I can get the guy that owns this house to prune those trees because that's an important part of his shading strategy. <laughs> sure. But still, it's a magnificent view. You've got the whole McDowell mountain range. You can start to see just the tip of the superstition, the head wall of superstition. Sure. Over there. So this is an Davis, awesome. this is incredible. It's pretty good. And if we find somebody that wants to put my goodness. a 10 car garage underneath the house, uh, then this lot's golden. This, this direction to the south, it's, uh, it's moving. And we've got a nice view of the patch of feet. That view is set and finished. Such a pretty time of day. So I've got somewhat bad eyes, but all the way to the south on the very, 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 as you can just see it on the horizon out there popping up. How far is that? I think That's those, south of South Mountain. Oh, way south of South Mountain. I think those mountains are about 80 miles away. So it's, it's a big, big view. It's absolutely incredible. It's really nice. I mean, there 
And there's Camelback, and Camelback's probably 35 air miles away. Wow. So it's a... Uh, this absolutely... It's great. We're at an elevation here of about 3,400 feet, somewhere in there, so very different climate, 3,340. Now, in terms of what you're buying in, ter in size of the, uh, of the lot, you know, with the, the, the land, the prices, it just seems like a tremendous value. Well, I can tell you there's another lot that I don't have a listing on in Lost Star, lot 38, that's on the market for eight and a quarter. It's exactly the same situation uh, where there's a home that is on the low downhill side of the view. Uh, and to be able to buy that, I specifically made my list price recommendation to keep it under 700 to have a clear attraction to this lot compared to that one. Look, we're getting to the point where I'm, I'm sight fishing you know, it's there are just one or two other lots that I've got to defend against. Sure. And so there's a lot of precision that goes into these list prices. I, I'm just speaking in the whole of the valley as well. I mean, when I look at what, you know, would be av available to build on, you know, and, and nothing against Paradise Valley. It's a beautiful area. It just, it doesn't offer what this does. I guess d different buyers, though. Yeah, I mean, we can't offer what Paradise Valley offers. And, and they, they can't, can't offer yeah. what you do. Yeah. No, but the air is cleaner up here. It's a 12-month-a-year it's a month year climate. Uh, you've got the opportunity to join the Desert Mountain Club, which is a life-changing. I don't want to over-dramatize it, but it's... Yeah. If you want that sort of thing in your life, you can't sure. find that anywhere else. Yeah. Is there any other place in the world that has six professional courses like this? Uh, and there are a few. Soon to be there's, seven? Uh, there's a place in Georgia that's got six courses. PGA West has five in Palm Desert, but... Uh, Far and few between. Far and few between. Yeah. And the, the fifth, the, tri, the, the private trail system here, uh, the club's management or the board understands that uh, golf communities as a whole are not doing quite as well today as they might have been doing 20 years ago. Sure. Uh, it's People are not playing as much golf as they used to, and so that's why they have consciously spent the money to redo the Snoring Clubhouse to add the pickleball, add all yeah. these other things. Yeah. The, the, uh, Hiking trail system was put in with private money. People in the community donated the money to do that. To do that trail system, and it's just perfect. Yeah, it looks like the trails that Jose put in, but they're 15 miles of them. Yeah. So it's uh, it's well, it's and that's imp that's important. You don't uh, uh, you don't think about it every day, but having a, a management board like that that doesn't have their head in the sand, that's uh, going to be good for everybody that's, and their values long term. It sure will be. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So we got uh, what, one one, one more, more in Desert Mountain to go. Apache Peak 94. Perfect. And it's a pretty special lot, just two minutes up the road. That's, and that's big. Some of the most expensive home sites in Desert Mountain have been here over the years. I had the good fortune years ago of selling five lots, bang, 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 on that little cul-de-sac, and uh, now I have a chance to sell a sixth that backs up to it. Fantastic. Uh, but I'm about to turn left here to approach Apache Peak 94, which is set in this hillside, uh, this dramatic hillside of these rock outcroppings, with nothing behind except those rocks. Wow. And it's a, it's a stable landscape. These things aren't likely to come tumbling down anytime soon. Uh, but the views back to the east and to the south are going to really be exciting for your viewers. So here we are at Patch Peak 94. Cul-de-sac. We're going to rename this Quartz Cactus Cul-de-sac. This is this is, this is Quartz Cactus Cul-de-sac. Because Quartz hey. just walked into a little nice clump of jumping choya and it jumped. And it jumps. Ah. God dang it! Oh, dang it! Ah. Oh. So so lesson jumped. so lesson be learned um, when you're up here. Don't uh, don't don't be looking on the ground for Indian pottery. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I bet you we can still find some. But leave the looking for me. Okay, Deal. You, can, you can see in the background this is an enormous view. You got uh, this, the Mazatals. Payson lies over there behind uh, the mountains to the left. You've got the Four Peaks. Bar uh, Bartlett Reservoir is below that. You can't see it. And then the trees are in the way, but you've got all the Superstition Mountains there. And then swinging around from a finished floor elevation on this slide, you'd have a total view of the McDowell Mountains. And the uphill view would be equally as dramatic. Uh, 
There are two elements to a lot, aren't there, Court? Yep. You've got view and you've got setting. And the ideal lots are the ones that have a massive amount of, of both. This one's got it. This one's got it in spades on both of them. So we're going to walk just a few yards up here to the pole. If you can make it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch you do that. Okay, we'll, yeah. we'll report back in about two minutes, so don't <laughs> go away. All right, let's go take a little walk, guys. This is a great sunrise lot. It's a great moonrise lot. And a sunset, you could still see a good sunset because the colors are going to be reflected in the clouds that are going to be around. So it's just a massive, massive view. Now uphill from here, let's step just a couple of feet away. And you can see these rock outcroppings. I believe that uh, this is going to be a two level house. I don't really know how you could build a one story house on this. But it's going to be uh, a good example of how the best architecture comes out of the toughest sites. And this is a toughie. But Shelby's got a great feel for it. We're high enough too, and it's not the right time, but if the fountains, if fountain hills were going off, you could plainly see those fountains that are, you know, that's 25 miles away. Uh, we're at uh, 3,400 feet up here. It would be a rare day where the temperature would be over 100 on this lot. And at nighttime, you'd have a sweater on in the middle of July. So it's a great, great spot. If you'd like to see it, give me a call and we'll bring you up here and show you the cactus that got court. <laughs> Thank you.